Next, I've selected two famous classical rock endings against Victor Kuchnoi and the first Kasparov is Black in the World Cup Barcelona 1989. Double rock endings are, have, of course, several differences compared to single rock endings. Most important is that the king attack is often more dangerous and must be taken seriously. Two rocks can, of course, easier give perpetual check than a single rock, obviously. Extra pawns are more important, especially if they shield the king or help in the attack. And here Kasparov's F pawn can help in the attack. And the A pawn, of course, is dangerous as well, but would also be very dangerous in a single rook ending, no doubt about that. Yeah, and often the winning chances of the attacker are higher, and in some respect this is a case in point, but careful calculation is needed. How did Kasparov continue here with black to move? Black is winning, but it's not trivial. First, prophylactic measures with rook f8 are needed so that white cannot give perpetual. There is no mating attack, why it doesn't have sufficient forces for that. So, but, but Black's attack could be dangerous, so Korshner trades down to a single rook ending and says, okay, I'll exchange all your pawns, and yeah, with, a, with the rest I will deal. But Kasparov has seen that it doesn't matter. Now the number of pawns is equal, but... The rook belongs behind the pass pawn, and black is winning in all variations. It is quite close, some only by a single tempo, but nothing can be done. And the big difference, of course, is, or there are two big differences, in fact, white must come back. And then white's rook is passive, black is active, and white's black's king is active, white's king is passive, and this all adds up to a win for black. After king g2, the rook is forced to passivity. Then, of course, check. This is a big advantage of the active rook. Black keeps everything under control and threatens f2. Yeah, and yeah, black is winning. So, of course, now I tried the race directly, but it doesn't matter. The rook is forced to passivity, and then the king can come. And after d7, black wins with king g3, and rook b8. And Kasparov's attack always comes. First, for example, rook f1, rook b1, d8 queen. Yeah, when Kasparov does it, it's always... Uh, it is quite close, but Kasparov has calculated everything correctly in advance. Nothing can be done. King h2 also doesn't save the day. King g2 doesn't help. Rook d8, white, no. Cannot do anything for real. And the check then decides the day in black's favor. And after d7, king f3. Black wins again in a nice finishing touch. Check. Queen with check. And checkmate. Yeah. In many of Kasparov's instructive endgame wins, he manages to drum up a king attack out of the clear blue sky. And this is a case in point.